everybody welcome back to sarah j awesome you know a lot of people were upset about the v11 software update that we got in december and we are in march 2022 now tesla has already fixed some of our complaints the last couple weeks i have gotten two software updates and these are not huge software updates they're just little ones that come out you know every few weeks or so and both of them are freaking awesome and have really cool features in there i am so excited <laughs> We're going to click on release notes. And the first one that I got was this one right here, regenerative braking in autopilot. <laughs> if I'm being honest here, I really didn't think that autopilot you got that much regenerative braking, but I guess that's because I was really thinking about it on the freeway because that's the only place that I use autopilot. I don't have the full self-driving or full self-driving subscription anymore. So I really just use auto steer on the freeway. In this update, regenerative braking and autopilot. Autopilot will now use more regenerative braking at low speeds for higher efficiency, hello, and improved driving experience, especially in stop and go traffic. Increased use of regenerative braking results in less brake pedal noise and smoother stops. There's two reasons that this is totally freaking amazing. Number one, this is great that it's more efficient on city streets with autopilot. Higher efficiency is like the number one thing that you want to see with an electric vehicle with an update. That is like, like top tier best software update ever. Anything that makes the car more energy efficient. Also, I don't really notice the brake pedal noise, but with smoother stops, when I started driving this car a year and a half ago, <laughs> It was a little bit rough when I was in stop and go traffic, whether I was on city streets or on the freeway, it was like, it just wasn't smooth. <laughs> it was okay, like it was impressive because I never had that feature before in any vehicle. But now a year and a half later, most recently, like a few weeks ago, I have noticed that it is significantly smoother when you're in stop and go traffic on auto steer. It slows down slower and it accelerates faster if it needs to. It just keeps up with the flow of traffic more like a human being than it ever has before. Before it has always been a little bit jerky. It either slows down too fast or it speeds up too slowly and people behind you are like, oh my god, like are you playing on your phone? What are you doing? Hurry up and speed up. The traffic moved up a little bit. That is great. This makes stop and go so much better. I'm very happy about this update. That is a huge thing. This is a huge one. We had a lot of complaints about this with V11, we lost this little sentry mode icon right here and it completely disappeared. And we ended up with these two icons here. This one is just for live view. And then this one is for sentry mode. But with the V11 software update, even though you touched this, it wouldn't save the clips. So you only had two options to save the clips. This way you hit the save button, use voice command and say, save that. But that was a problem if you were talking on the phone with someone through Bluetooth. So now with this new little update here, I was driving one day, taking the kids to school and I was like, oh my God, my little sentry mode red dot is back up here again. That's insane. And I'm like, did they seriously just bring that back? And I also noticed you can save like this now. So you just hit this little button when you're driving and it saves the clip. So that makes it very quick and easy. You do have to have this icon down here. So you want to keep that in your four icons that you always have on the screen. That way you don't have to go into anything. You know, you don't have to go into this to find it, but that's great. This is just improvements on the car colorizer. I freaking love this. Obviously I'm already using it. Even though my car is still white, I'm just changing the color whenever I feel like it because it just makes me happy. And then yesterday I just got this update. Boombox features are now only available while parked. This software update freaking sucks. And I feel like this is because y'all are screwing around too much. New language support to switch your language settings, tap controls, display touchscreen language. And there was another language that they updated on here a couple months ago. That is super, super awesome. Active phone calls, user interface improvements. You can now hide your phone call card, allowing you to see the next turn while the navigation turn list is covered. Tap the phone icon on the status bar to show the card again. So this is great. Again, this makes it safer because you're doing multiple things. You're talking on the phone, you're driving, you're looking at your map. It's a lot. And so you don't want that to be covering up your next turn. Vehicle preconditioning, climate control improvements. Vehicle preconditioning accessed via the Tesla app will now remain active up to 30 minutes 
after a door is opened, making it easier to load your vehicle without affecting climate control. This is good and bad, and I will tell you why. It's great because I hate it when in the morning I turn on my heater, right? And I do schedule departure, which is good because I'm not losing any charge while it's turning on the heater and preheating the cabin and the battery. But when I come out to my car and I start loading up all my stuff for work, my lunch, my coffee, my purse, all the other stuff, as soon as I open the door the first time, it turns off the heater, which is kind of annoying because then by the time I've opened up the doors and everything and I get in, my car is no longer like super warm. It's let out all the heat. And so then I'm back to square one. But this is also bad because if you are doing stuff and you forget about it, I feel like you could lose a little more battery, especially if you're not plugged in, but you are preconditioning, you could lose more range than you anticipated. That could be something to take into consideration there. Charging time estimation. This is great as well. Estimated charging times are now more accurate by taking the current battery pack temperature into account when a vehicle is connected to a supercharger or a third party fast charger. This is great for two reasons. Uh, one, because you just want it to be an accurate time so you know exactly how long it's gonna take you to charge up. But this is also good because I got charged for idle fees at a Tesla supercharger. Idle fees are when you are supercharging your car and then you basically walk away from your car to go get coffee or lunch or go to the bathroom or whatever and your car finishes charging but it's still plugged in and no one else can park there and you're basically just like taking up space in the supercharger but not actively charging. I want to say mine was two dollars a minute so I got charged like two dollars because I was pretty much back to my car already. Let's say you're at a restaurant and you're eating and your car is supercharging and it says it's going to take a certain amount of time but it ends up reaching the limit faster and you're not paying attention, then you're like, oh crap, like I thought I had more time. And then you get charged a fee for idling because it already got up to the percentage battery you wanted faster. So I, I could be wrong. Let me know what you think about that situation. But I think this is really good that it's more accurate because, you know, if your battery is super cold or your battery is super hot, it could be off by a few minutes. I don't supercharge that much, so I'm not that familiar with this. And I've never used a third party fast charger, so I am not familiar with that at all. I am very, very happy with these updates. I love that Tesla listens to us. And if we have a problem with something, then they will try their best to fix it as quick as possible. And they can't make everyone happy at the same time, but they really do try. So that is it for this video. I just wanted to go over that really quick because I love these little updates. A lot of times the updates in between are really not big things like this. They're usually just bug fixes and stuff like that, little tiny improvements. But this is really some good stuff that is super important to me and a lot of them make the car more safe, make the car more efficient. Finally, this is the first time that I have actually received a software update that said makes the car more energy efficient. So I love my car so much. I love getting these updates, whether they're good, whether they're bad, whether I like them, whether I don't. I always ultimately like them because my car is never boring. I love getting in here and being surprised. I hope y'all enjoyed this little video. I just love these little updates. It just makes me so happy. And I know if you already have your car, then you're like, okay, I already knew all this stuff. Like I already got these updates, but if you're waiting to take delivery, then you're probably really enjoying this. So this video is definitely for you if you have not taken delivery yet and you're waiting on your special baby to come in, then, you know, this is something to get excited about. I love you all so much. I hope y'all have a great week and I'll see y'all next time.